right then I'm back and this is the thing that's leaking V8 got all the doors off and I'm getting somewhere close to where I need to be so overnight over about 18 hours the standing pressure in this circuit dropped to 74 so yesterday when I valved it off up there I just I just closed them straight up so we had a little bit of liquid in the liquid line all the way up to the expansion valves and all of that has boiled off already and so we have just vapor in there and it was at uh, 74 just a minute ago. I'm adding um, nitrogen. And we'll see if we can locate the leak. Okay, okay. Leak number one. Hopefully the only leak, and the main leak. Right there. Alright, so the plan was, or became, to get some rubber hose, a couple hose clamps, and try to do that instead of trying to weld very thin aluminum. So I got rubber hose from AutoZone, see? And three hose clamps from the Home Depot. Now me, like a dumbass, bought the hose clamps before I bought the hose, and the hose clamps are barely big enough. Hopefully I can make them work. E work. So my hose clamps were too small, but I did that at improvise, which is what we do. So So there's my leak right there, you see? Now my camera didn't record it, I was, I was too busy, but I was tightening it tighter and tighter until the bubbles disappeared. Also notice how I've got the clamp positioned and the rubber positioned because my leak was on the bottom. So I've got equal pressure from the clamp all the way around and the maximum amount of rubber covering the leak on the bottom. Okay, so my leak here is stopped, okay? But in leak searching, I got one more gonna be it's gonna be up there under the under the mounting brackets the only way to get to that is you gotta take the top this top off so you've got the top panel that completely comes off there's just four screws holding it Okay, then you've got the insulated panel, which is held in by these 5 16 screws, or quarter inch screws. They're held in by something, I know that. I think those are the ones. Okay, yes, I was right. There's nine screws that hold from underneath, three in each cavity, and then it lifts off. Okay, and now with it lifted and up in place, I can see better what I'm doing. So 
shit. I got leaks in both of these top ones. Here's a tip. If you got a screw that's stripped out and doesn't wanna wanna go, stick a flathead down there if you can and, and make it go. Once your flathead forces those threads to grab, it's all good. Alright, so I got the bracket off. And the bracket is what really caused it. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one, and I'm going to support the coil with a piece of wire around it, and we're going to have to order two coils. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, both of my leaks on this middle foil of the right side 12 foot case are sealed. So this is how I supported the coil. Just holding it. I got the bracket up here. I'm probably gonna try to order another bracket though because this one's all kind of screwed up. And I'm gonna let the top down and put it back together. I mounted my expansion panels back and my sensing bolts with those new straps.
So I got this motor's bad, but but then look at this. Like this is all rusted out. Can't even get it tight because it's in such bad shape. That motor is really definitely seized. Nine watt clockwise. And then this one also is is seized, not working. So before I put this case back together, I had to fix these wires because you see this plug was real bad. Anyways, that was a problem waiting to happen. Alright man, when I'm finally done, I got all this crap put back together. I'm tired. I'm gonna go home. So I'm gonna get this video together and upload it. And whenever I come to change these two coils out, I'll try to make a video on it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you later.